Welcome to Rotary and uh, Serving Our Community. With us today we have uh, two special guests. We are going to be talking about Rotaract and how that fits into Rotary. Now Rotaract is a special group or organization that is a, I would say an entry level into Rotary and we're hoping that these uh, people will be able to talk to us a little bit about that. First we have Dana Goba. Dana, how are you doing today? Good, thank you, Wade. And Becky uh, Joyner, correct? Yes. Becky, how are you doing? Now, you are the uh, actual Rotaractor. You are currently a member of the Santa Barbara Rotaract Club, is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And um, how did you get involved? What started you in that? So, um, I initially got involved because one of the partners at the firm I work for, he's actually part of the Santa Barbara North Rotary Club. Um, I went to a meeting with him and it was a great time, but I was asking him if maybe there was something with a little bit more young professional kind of group. Um, and at that time, Rotaract had just been kind of starting back up, and I went to one of their meetings, and ever since then, I've been part of the group. Great, great. And what attracted you to it? What was specific um, um, that actually got you hooked to join? I think what really attracted me was not only is it a group of people who are my peers, but it's a group of people who really want to get back to the community. Sure. And one thing that I struggled with when I was out of college was it was kind of hard to volunteer as an individual, but as a group, it's a lot easier. So I think that's really the main attraction of it. Great, great. And Dana, you're here because you were a Rotaractor and have since graduated into Rotary. Uh, tell us a little bit about your Rotaract experience and what got you involved with that also. Sure, I had a fantastic time when I was in Rotaract. It was a great group of people. Many today are still my friends, very, very dear friends, actually. Great. And similarly, I became involved because I wanted to volunteer. And as um, was mentioned, volunteering as a group is much easier than trying to find a volunteer opportunity as an individual when you want to volunteer at a variety of organizations. So that's really what drew me to Rotaract initially. Very good, great. Um, Becky, what is the, would you say, has been your favorite project or uh, event that you've done so far? Um, I have a couple of favorite projects. One of them is uh, Devro Day. So we work with them, and once a year we get together and we help set up. They have different themed parties, but it's really nice working with them. And then also Relay for Life. We um, participated in that the first time this year as a group, and that's kind of near and dear to my heart because of somebody closely related to me who had cancer, so. Got it. Tell us a little bit about the uh, Devro Day. Um, what, what kind of event is it? What do you guys actually yeah, do Yeah, so there? at Devro Day, once a year, they uh, have, a, it's basically a party for the students there, um, and they kind of had different themes. So one year they had like a bunch of games set up. And so we basically went in, we helped do all the setup. We actually got to participate and hang out with the people there. Um, and it's just so that their family and friends can come and visit them and enjoy the day with them and not have to worry about doing things. So we take care of all the back work on that. Oh, good. Now, how many of you were there? Do you remember that day? Um, I think the year that I did, there were about 15 of us. Oh, 15. And then I think this past year, just because of timing, there were only a group of like six to nine of us there. Okay. So All day commitment? All day commitment. All day yeah. commitment. Hope they fed you. Did you have yeah, no. We get <laughs> yeah. fed really well. <laughs> oh, good. That, that is good. Yeah. <laughs> Dana, how about you? Do you remember uh, some of the events you did when you were in Rotaract? I did. We had some great events when we were in Rotaract. One that comes to mind was when the opera had a performance. It was actually a children's performance, and they had very elaborate costumes. So being in Rotaract just gave us that extra access to be able to see the behind the scenes of that performance. And we end up being ushers and other activities such as that. So it was just great Rotary that has been consistent throughout my Rotary life oh, has been just that special access uh -huh. that you get, whether it's to a business, to an organization, a program. That's good. Now, have any of the uh, road actors that you're with moved forward with you into Rotary? Yes, I am part of the Rotary Club of Santa Barbara Sunrise, mm -hmm. and we actually have quite a few Rotaractors. Um, we have Liz Warehain, now Alves. We have David Vo, Lucille Boss, and I believe there might be a couple others as well who were in Rotaract for a brief time. Very so good. Sunrise is very good at attracting <laughs> Rotaractors. Good. I believe you are the first uh, Rotary Club president to come from that group. 
Is that correct? I believe so, <laughs> yes. Yes, I Good just finished my presidency this past July. And how was that? I loved it. As everyone says, it's the best year, and it was. It was the best year. I had a lot of fun, great support from my club. I really love my club, so <laughs> it was a fantastic Good. year. Now, do you think Rotaract actually got you prepared for that presidency and taking that next step? It was, Rotaract was a great introduction to Rotary. I feel fortunate when I was in Rotaract, we had wonderful support from all of the eight Rotary clubs in the area, including yourself, would come to most of our meetings. So we actually had members from practically eight clubs attend each and every one of our meetings. So it was great having that support and just learning the culture and the people involved. And I still feel that all of the Rotary clubs are family and they all welcome me with open arms. Great, outstanding. Um, as far as members in your club currently, the uh, Rotaract Club, do you know what kind of uh, businesses, backgrounds they come from? Have you yeah, taken so, a look at that? Yeah, the really cool thing about our club is that everyone works in like different fields. So I work in accounting. We have teachers, we have people who are part of the health industry, people who are in finance. So it's really cool because when we get together, the types of ideas and projects that people um, want to work on it's all different so it's really neat now how do you select a project um, as a group as a group <laughs> we usually one person at a meeting will bring up a nonprofit that they want to work with um, and then they'll kind of if there's a big event going on for that nonprofit they'll share that with the group and tell us what we need to do and we kind of vote on it or base it on how many people we can actually provide to that event got it do you have any on the board right now that you're considering, that you're thinking about? Um, so we are definitely, for the holidays, are going to be working with big brothers and big sisters. And we're not doing a particular event for them, but we have sponsored two families, and we are going to do a Trolley of Lights event, and we are going to just raise money for those families for Christmas. Very good. Mm -hmm. Have you been working with the uh, Rotary Clubs also to see if there's anything they're doing special that you wanted to, I would say, jump into and help out? Um, you know what? We have done some things in the past, but nothing right now upcoming. So if any of the Rotary Clubs do need our help with anything, <laughs> we're more than willing to hear them out and have them come to one of our meetings. Great. Um, as far as your club structure, um, you have a president, I presume. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a vice president? Yes, yeah, so we did our first elections this year. So we have a new president, a new vice president, a new secretary, and then we've also set up chair, chair positions. So right now I'm fundraising chair, <laughs> which is kind of a lot of responsibility, but I'm excited about it. Good, good. Um, your board then, do you have a continuum plan uh, put in place? In other words, uh, you have a current president. Does mm -hmm. the vice president become the president, or do you go through um, different elections? Um, I think each year we're going to have elections. Yeah, have elections. Yeah. Okay, good. And how many of you, or when was it that you first started? Do you remember what year I, approximately? Is it three years? I started like actually that? in August of 2013. 2013. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how many of those members are still in the Rotaract Club today? Mm, I don't know exact number, but I'd say at least 70%. 70%? Mm -hmm. oh, so we good. have really good retention that's rate. Good. <laughs> Very good. And as I recall, it was quite the uh, chartering night you guys had, uh, mm -hmm. held at the Montecito Country Club, correct? Yeah, it was really awesome. We had all of the clubs came. Um, you were there as well. <laughs> right. uh, and it just was a nice event to see how much support we get from all of the Rotary Clubs around us. Good. Um, for recruiting, what do, you, what do you do to recruit? How do you find those, those new members or how do you approach them? Um, I approach anyone that I'm like, hey, do you want to come make some great friends? Come to Rotaract. Um, but we also have t-shirts, we have our Facebook page. Um, we're currently working on a new member packet so that when we do get people who are interested, we can send them that packet. Or um, most of the time, it's just meeting people around town and inviting them to come to our meetings. Got it. So you said you have a web page? Yes. Well, the web page is actually under construction right now. Okay. But we have our Facebook page up. And okay. if you Google Santa Barbara Rotaract, that should be one of the first things that pulls up. Very good. <laughs> Are there any other contacts you'd like to share with the audience? Any other way that they could get in, get a hold of you, get in contact with you? Um, basically, uh, through any of the Rotary Clubs. So if you guys hear about somebody who's interested, most of the Rotary Clubs have at least our 
board members and our chair's um, contact information. So just kind of send them over our way through that. Okay, very good. Now, Dana, uh, when you were in Rotaract, I believe you had a couple of special events happening uh, when you, that you did through Rotary. Do you want to mention any of those? Special any events. Any events, uh, programs, things like that? Because I know Liz, for example, mm -hmm. went on a uh, GSA group study right. exchange. Right, yes. As far as the bigger Rotary, yes. Liz and I were actually, who were travel mates with GSE along with another woman who lives in Ventura mm -hmm. and our team leader Max who's in Camarillo and the four of us still keep in touch Good. and this has been about five years now this is back in 09 uh -huh. that we went to Thailand and felt like rock stars it was <laughs> our rotary rock star tour Good. where we traveled around the country it's about 13 cities in 23 days wow. so you would wake up you wouldn't know where you were um, and everybody just welcomed you with open arms you'd walk out the door and there's cameras and people taking your pictures so you truly felt like a rock star great. it was great and again that backstage access that we had we went to businesses and places that a tourist could not go mm -hmm. and we were able to meet with mayors meet with other city officials people in terms of wastewater and also just everyday business such as a jade business and really seeing behind the scenes so it's fantastic I loved every minute do you know what the uh, mission of uh, Group Study Exchange actually is? Or would you like to explain that? Sure, Group Study Exchange, when I did the program, it was a professional and cultural exchange. So when we went, we would actually stay in families' homes, which was a great way to really immerse yourself and even though we did not speak Thai, some of them did speak English, which made it easier, but even when the families didn't, they just did the rotary welcome with open arms. They took you into their home, treated you like a family member. You, know, you had your own place at the dinner table and it was just, it was so fantastic sharing the culture of the two countries and just learning about the two countries. That is great, mm -hmm. Out outstanding. Now were the homes that you stayed at, the homestays, were they actually mm -hmm. Rotarians or were they uh, non-Rotary? Most of them were Rotarians, however if Rotarians weren't able to offer their home we would stay with non-Rotarians as okay. well. So we And language was not a barrier, most of them spoke the language or a little bit of English? Even if they didn't charades <laughs> it was a good you time. can make it work yes you can it's make amazing it work. how much you can communicate when you can't speak the same language right um, the um, group study exchange used to focus on vocation so what vocation were you mm -hmm. representing when you went right so when I when I was representing healthcare, okay. and part of the opportunity I had when I was in Thailand was to see various hospitals I was able to see a public hospital which was a very different experience from seeing a private hospital um, the common class and then the upper class have very different health care there and a passion of mine is public health so being able to talk with the hospitals and about the health issues that people experience and especially with the migration of people from one country to another and bringing in various diseases, things along those lines, it was really fascinating. What are the um Vocations were represented along with you. Do you remember our family? Along there, we had journalism mm -hmm. and we also had banking. Okay. And so, you, did you get experience also in those mm -hmm. fields? Yes, we did, Wade. So, <laughs> we did visit some banks. Fortunately or unfortunately, they didn't give us any money. But we did visit <laughs> some banks and we went to a printing press and we all actually got to have our own handmade signature on a stamp that they did for us that day. So that we did get to experience the other vocations as wow. well. That's great. And you said it was a six week, uh, five or six week program? This, it was actually 23 days 23 that we days. were there for okay. Rotary. And then we were having such a great time that some of us extended our stay a little <laughs> bit and traveled around. Great, great. Now one other thing that was unique about that program mm -hmm. is that the only person that could be a Rotarian was the team leader, mm -hmm. which was Max, correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Um, Tell us a little bit about, Ma about Max. Um, you, you could be honest, most people uh, don't Hi, know Max. Max. <laughs> but was Max good? Uh, Max he, is great. Yeah. Max, and we actually took a Myers-Briggs before we went oh, as good. part of our training. Okay. And Max and I are actually the same Myers-Briggs. <laughs> <laughs> so we got along very well. Oh, yes, good. Max was fantastic. He was a great team leader. He was supportive of us the entire time. Mm -hmm. 
Um, because really the team leader, they're there being the leader, but they're also there supporting the team members. Right. So he had that perfect balance, really, of being able to help us in what we were trying to get out of the trip, as well as his role with the leader in really promoting Rotary. Now, Becky, I hope you're taking notes on this, because these are some of the opportunities <laughs> that are available to you also. The selection process, um, I know mm -hmm. Max had to go through a selection process, yes. but then the team also, I believe, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. was a uh, pretty stiff competition, mm -hmm. competition from what I recall. Yes, we had to write an essay, and we also had an interview as well. So the whole process was quite grueling and <laughs> stressful, and they do, they select the team and also a few alternates because traditionally at least one or two people end up having to drop out for various reasons. Right, right. Now, have you kept in contact with the entire team or most of the team? Yes, okay. yes, I yeah. still have. They're all <laughs> great friends. Now, how about on the other side in mm -hmm. Thailand? Have you kept in contact with any of them? I am Facebook friends with some. Oh, so good. while we good. aren't actually in a regular communication, we do, we watch each other's Facebook pages. Got it. Now, as part of that group study exchange, you um, actually exchange teams. We had a team come in then from uh, Thailand mm -hmm. also, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, did you get time to actually meet with them personally, the team to team? Mm -hmm. Very, I wasn't involved as much on this end, so not as much as when I was over there. Okay, got it. For you, have you um, has your club done any international projects or considered doing any Not of those? Not yet, but we really would like to. Um, the board members actually went to, I think, a grant writing mm -hmm. seminar. Yeah. Um, so now we have the ability to apply for a Rotary grant, which we're trying to um, find a project that we want to work on and then apply the, for the grant for. Okay, good, good. I know um, one of the Rotary uh, Rotaract clubs has done house building, they've done mm -hmm. uh, Habitat for Humanity projects, and also they've actually gone to India for uh, National oh, Immunization wow. <laughs> Days. Um, and they were sponsored by their Rotary Clubs, mm -hmm. so you may want to plant a seed there and see if you have any yeah, takers no, to help you out do. with supporting that. Right. Um, as far as the community and community involvement, mm -hmm. what do you think is the one area that you really enjoy? Is it the youth? Is it working with people that are homeless, uh, special needs people? What, what do you see personally? Um, personally, I like working with the youth okay. and special needs. Uh, we had a miniature golf tournament to help support the Santa Barbara Courthouse Legacy Foundation, and that's kind of our big annual event that we do each year. And the first day, it's just for the sponsor, private sponsorships um, to play, but on Saturday, we open it up to the community, and it's really neat to see all the families and kids come out and have a great time there. Is that an annual event? Yes, it is an annual event. And when do you have it usually? Um, it's usually in September, although the Courthouse Legacy Foundation is thinking about pushing it back to October. Okay. So. Okay, so this uh, this next year, October? Would next be the time year, to look. October. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. good. And um, those, uh, you said it's a fundraiser, so part of it is proceeds going to what specific? So all of the proceeds go back to the courthouse. And something that a lot of people don't know about Santa Barbara and the courthouse is that it's entirely funded by private donations and public support. So that's one of their main events um, to try to bring in income to keep the courthouse looking as beautiful as it is. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the event. Now, how do you lay it out? Do you actually use the grass itself that you bring in? <laughs> so we have a vendor, and um, we've used him both years. We He basically brings truckloads of miniature golf sets. <laughs> and so this past year, we did um, just, we base the themes on each of the sponsors. So like Santa Barbara Yacht Club, they set up one with a sailboat there. and. So we just set that up, and then people just come in, pay, and then they play. Okay, and yeah. age group. Uh, did you notice the age? Is it very young to, I would say, senior? <laughs> <laughs> so definitely on Friday with the sponsorships, it's mostly business people, so obviously an older age group. But then on the family day, it's mostly, I'd say, between like anywhere from like five-year-olds to maybe like 15-year-olds oh, come good. out and play. Oh, I see. And do mm -hmm. you give gifts, uh, awards, things like that? Yeah, so we really ha had some cool prizes this year. Um, there were some prizes to do private tours of the courthouse, which is pretty neat to go see at nighttime. That would be. <laughs> 
No long drive, I would take it. <laughs> we do. We, there's a 50 foot putt. Oh my goodness. And if you sink it, you get a prize. Really? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what the prize was? Um, you know, there were a few in there. So that was basically if you, you paid extra to play on the 50 foot putt. And if you sunk it, you got to choose out of the prize basket. Oh, nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Do you remember some of the prizes? Some of the um, sponsors that probably donated to those? The Yacht Club, definitely Santa Barbara mm -hmm. Sailing. They donated a few tours on there. Um, there was a large one for brunch at the Biltmore for four. So that one, I think it went to a couple, they came with their kids and they had like four kids and they're like, oh, we hope we get that one because we need a date night. <laughs> and they ended up getting it, which is oh, really right. awesome. <laughs> yeah. <is> good. <laughs> Great. Um, do you have food with that? Is it kind of an all day event or is it? Um, you know, we had water and little snacks like chips and um, pretzels for the little kids, but I think next year we're going to try to get like maybe a cotton candy machine and something good. a little bit more fun for the kids. Good, good. Now what other events do you have that you could talk about? Um, well, the main thing with our group is that we're trying to set up more consistent events to work on. So we do have um, regular beach cleanups that we do and we try to do that at least once a quarter as a group. Um, but mostly we're trying to get people um, from other clubs to work with us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now there's, a, you, I believe, a rummage sale or something you were doing? Mm -hmm. So we um, need to meet our polio goal each year. And one of the ways that we do that is through a rummage sale. Oh, okay. You said polio goal. So mm -hmm. that is a fundraising effort for the Rotary Foundation yes, Polio Plus program? Uh -huh. Outstanding. Do you know about how much that brings in each year? Or do you plan on bringing it? Our goal is to get at least a thousand dollars each year. A thousand dollars each year. Mm -hmm. Good. And who do you contribute that to? Do you go through a club or does it go straight to the foundation? We do it through um, one of the Rotary Clubs. That I think it's Group 8 that we do it through. Okay. Group 8. Now, Danny, you were part of that Group 8, correct? Mm -hmm. Are they getting the uh, Paul Harris Awards uh, points, things like that for it? Do you know offhand? I actually don't know offhand. I would have to check with my S assistant governor to see. Something we should probably check yes. on and make sure you're getting that because that's uh -huh. two mm -hmm. uh, Paul Harris's right mm -hmm. there that you should be getting. <laughs> Very good. Dana, um, as far as your experience and background coming from Rotaract first and then mm -hmm. going to Rotary, how do you see the clubs working best to support and uh, sponsor the Rotaract Club? I think having an open line of communication is key and attending as Becky was talking about, sharing those events, whether it's a fundraiser, whether it's a volunteer project, just working side by side and forming those relationships. If I didn't have those relationships, I would not have joined Rotary. I yeah, would have either absolutely. stayed in Rotaract or I would have just left Rotary family in general. Right. So I do think the relationships are key, especially if we want to bring up Rotaractors into various Rotary clubs. Good point. How often do you meet? Um, we meet the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. Um, we meet at 6.30 at the Blind Tiger, third floor. <laughs> Blind Tiger, third floor. Yeah, so we were originally <laughs> meeting at Casablanca restaurant in their back room, but our club has gotten so much bigger okay. that we needed a bigger space. And um, luckily, we can go there, we meet, everyone gets maybe a drink for happy hour, and we sit down and we talk about what events we want to work on. Do you have an address and time for that? Uh, I do meeting? not know the exact address of Blind Tiger. Okay. It is on Lower State Street. Okay. It's at 6 30 on every Tuesday, the second and fourth Tuesdays. Second and fourth Tuesdays. Yeah. Okay, great, great. Is there a, a charge for somebody that wanted to attend? Uh, no, no charge um, nice. for anyone who wants to attend. In fact, we might buy you a free drink if you want to mm -hmm. come to our meeting. So. <laughs> and uh, the programs, do you have programs or what does a meeting usually uh, entail or include? Um, we do have um, board meetings that on the other Tuesdays and so they kind of discuss the setup of what we're going to discuss at the upcoming club meetings. Okay. Um, so it's basically we run through an icebreaker usually so if there's any new members we they get introduced and we do some sort of introduction for everyone else in the club and then we kind of just go through um, events that we have upcoming or what we want to work on. Got it. No programs, is it mostly business then? Most of the meetings are business oriented or focusing on that? Um, 
just curious because some Rotary clubs have programs. That's one thing that they okay. that they do offer. I was just curious if yours offered the same. Uh, no, no not, programs not right, right now. now. Okay, yeah. good. That's that's fine. I was just curious on, on knowing that. Um, and if somebody were to get involved uh, and wanted to join, how would they go about joining the club? Um, they would definitely come to a meeting first and. We do have annual dues. It's only $50 a year for annual dues to join our club. And it's not exactly a requirement, but it is strongly recommended that they attend at least um, one meeting every single month and then participate, obviously, in whatever events we have upcoming. Now, do you have uh, events once a month, uh, every other month? Do you have you kept track of that? Uh, I would say we do things maybe two to three things every quarter. Wow. Uh -huh. Okay. So that is just about once a month and pretty yeah. close to that. Oh, good for you. Um, planning, looking forward, looking mm -hmm. ahead. Do you plan on staying in Rotaract for a while and graduating in? Has Rotary uh, offered something that you would be interested in at this point or are you still kind of balancing that part out? Yeah, I think the group that we have right now is really a special group and I definitely want to stick with it for a couple more years and then maybe eventually graduate into a Rotary Club, maybe a Sunrise Group. Sunrise so seems to be getting quite a few. They've done a good <laughs> job of recruiting. That's, there's uh -huh. no doubt about that. Um, so tell us a little bit about your overall experience with Rotaract. Just, just how, how you personally have, um, have uh -huh. you enjoyed it? Is it something that you uh, gain from as far as serving the community? Definitely. I think right out of college, I kind of struggled with um, first off, finding people with the same kind of interest as me, and I think Rotaract really has provided that for me. Our whole group, everyone's young, they want to socialize and have fun, but they still want to give back to the community, so I think that's the main thing that I enjoy about it. Okay, oh good, good. And Dana, for you, um, the transition from Rotaract to Rotary, um, you definitely did a great transition becoming president of a Rotary Club. But tell us a little bit about how that transition was personally for you, if, if you enjoyed it, if it was something that you don't, uh, I would say, uh, didn't enjoy. <laughs> I did enjoy it. Again, it goes back to those relationships, and I had been attending the Sunrise meetings frequently, so I already knew quite a few people in the club through Rotary and actually through some personal and professional life as well. So I already had friends within the club, so it was a very easy transition in that regard. I know my Rotaract friends were sad to see me go, <laughs> but quite a few followed soon after, so we still get to have those friendships. So it's a very easy, smooth transition. Good. So no regrets. No and, regrets. And that's great. That is good. Um, expectations were all fulfilled as far as um, volunteering within the community and making that difference? It is. It's Rotary Club of Santa Barbara Sunrise has a variety of projects both in the community and internationally so wherever a person's interests lie we have a project. Great. Well both of you thank you very much for joining us. I sure enjoyed hearing more about the Rotaract Club and how that transitions into Rotary. So with that, if, if the audience is interested in any of this, please take a look at it. It's the Rotaract Club of Santa Barbara. Uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to host you. With that, thank you very much, everybody, for coming in. Thanks for attending.